Well, this is my project for this morning. Change oil in the tamper. I like to change oil every 150 hours. This one went over a little bit more than I liked, but uh, I got an opportunity here this morning to change oil. I think changing oil is a very good preventative maintenance program. I keep oil changes in my vehicles frequently on a very regular basis as needed. Okay. Trains are running decent today. That's good to see. Uh, this is the next part of my project. I've been uh, greasing this machine and uh, let me show you this. How nice this is. They got these blocks they put on the outside. When they rebuilt this machine in 2009, they put these blocks out here. Uh, these hoses go to the uh, slide slides, slide bearings right there. That slides up and down on that silver pole. That's what they said. This makes it really nice. Uh, they've got them in there. Before, I have, used to have to crawl back in there and get the insides of both of those work heads. This work head and the one over there I had to crawl in there. Now I only got to crawl here and get to the blocks. So, a whole lot better. Okay. Okay. Clean those fittings off first. He's also uh, greased the bushings on the squeeze cylinders. Makes it nice. Okay. Okay, these are the uh, squeeze cylinders. And uh, I told you the squeeze cylinder, reasons the squeeze cylinder bushings right in here. There's a, this is a teardrop pin that goes through there that holds that in. So that gets that greased. But when I'm in there, and when I'm out here, I always do a good inspection of my sandwich mounts. And up the snubbers are up under here. I always check them real good. Uh, I do a monthly full mechanical safety electrical inspection on this machine every month. And I'm waiting for a train right now to come in, so I've got time. It's a good time to do this stuff. But I want to show you this, because this thing is awesome. I have a Lincoln at home. I've had that Lincoln for a lot of years. I used to have a Lincoln here, this Milwaukee is the cat's meow it's it belongs to the mechanics but uh, of course they let me use it um but yeah this thing is awesome 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 i am very impressed with it as opposed to that lincoln it's got more pressure i think i'm very happy with it these are uh, the tools that go down in the ballast called tamping tools some people call them feet but uh two loose bolts and that one's missing so I'll get that tightened up okay we'll see what we can do here if, uh, if i don't take and do this kind of stuff greasing it and uh changing oil and stuff on my own it doesn't get done so Probably gonna have to move over here to get 
put a wrench on that one. Well, train just left, and I was heading out, and uh, in my tamper here, I was going, but I got called back. Uh, you know, Amtrak of Maryland has their tampering regulator out there. Uh, I guess they're finishing up today. They had those, uh, the uh, regulator operator was just down here and uh, needed some water. An antifreeze so I gave him what I had antifreeze I had a gallon and a half here and gave him that and uh, another jug of water apparently they blew a hose on the tamper today uh, radiator hose and uh, anyway they're heading back here with the tamper and the regulator as soon as the train goes by mile post 8 so I can't be following the track for those guys They've had an awful week, um, just an awful week. Those, those two guys, the regulator operator and the tamper operator, they're very good guys, they're real good guys. And then they come out here and they try their very, very best to do a really good job. And uh, the tamper has had all kinds of problems. Uh, they blew a pump drive on it, which is huge. Uh, he had to get towing five miles back to the milepost eight siding there. The other day, they worked all day trying to get that fixed, had to make a part. Uh, whatever I don't know what part it was but as it said told me they had to make a part and he's had all kind of electrical issues with the tamper too so it's been a very frustrating time uh, what they did do that I've seen they did an awesome job tamping so that's uh, that's railroad and that's tamping tampers have problems and, uh, but it's just frustrating for the guys that come out here and try to do a really good job and, they, um, and get something done and, and have to have problems like that on your tamper. Anyway, of course, you know, I have problems on my tamper too. <sighs> Just check the hours, 14,000, almost 14,900 hours on this machine. That's a lot. Still goes. They made it back in. That's Amtrak's equipment. I'm sure he's uh There you go. Well, guess what? Prep plants got all kind of cold. They're running really, really good today. Yeah. Anyway, the train was uh, dumped off. It was heading back up around milepost 8.5. Uh, the train went into PCS fall. Number 22 was in the lead on the east-west end. 3098 locomotive was on the end of train unit. It was the end of train unit. Uh, on the east end of the train. So I was out tamping anyway. The train operator was in the lead locomotive, didn't know if he had a pull apart or a derailment or what happened. The train went into PCS fault. Uh, that means the brakes come on 
goes into emergency. Uh, he walked the train back. Nothing wrong with the train. 3098 locomotive goofed up somehow. Somehow it goofed up. And went into PCS fault. So, he walked back, cleared the PCS fault, uh, put it in manual lead, got rid of the uh, remote system, uh, shut the remote system all off, breakers and stuff, went back to the lead locomotive, it went into PCS fault uh, again. So he's walking back to 3098 again. I volunteered. Uh, I was tamping number one locomotives at the harbor. They're going to bring it up, switch it out with 3098. But uh, I got to go up to the milepost date and clear up, but I can't get up there until they get that train moving. And then they're going to switch the locomotives around at milepost date siding. So that's where we're at this right now. So I'm sitting here on Bridge 9 waiting for clearance to get up to mile post 8. And I got number one locomotive coming up behind me. And uh, I told him to stop down there at Bridge 10. So, revolting situation. Now look at this. I'm in siding here at mile post 8. here, put me in the siding, and then send this train up to the prep plant. How about that? Unbelievable. But, I guess that's what the way it's going down. Okay! Another adventure. Well, I did want to say the reason why I can't move ahead because we got a couple pieces of uh, tie gang equipment still in the siding up here. So there's not enough room for me and the locomotive to be in this siding at the same time. So 3098's got to come in here. <sighs> okay, so that's why we got to do all this. If those two pieces of equipment weren't there, then I could have pulled on down through and 3098 could have come in behind me, made it a lot simpler, but that's uh, a little more of the story, why we got to do it this way, that we got to do it. <laughs> well, they got 3098 headed back to the harbor. The train here is backing down. I'm falling down. I'm going to get the switch, and then we'll let this train go up to the prep plant. Glad every day is not like this. Oh well.